Welcome to AFL Access. My name is Joel and today I'll be doing one of our final videos about our mid-season reviews. And today I'll be looking at both the Adelaide Crows and Gold Coast Suns. So without further ado, let's get... So, the Gold Coast have been a bit, well, up and down as of late. They started out pretty strong, winning three very close matches in a row, and then proceeding to lose their next, well, nine. Um, at the moment, they're currently sitting at 17th with a 3-10 and record, and a percentage of 71.9%, which is obviously not very good. All right, so our positives for the Suns this season has been, I think, some of the more experienced players have really start to galvanize. You have Alec, uh, you have Alex Sexton kicking twenty six goals for the season. I think he's one of the more under the radar kind of forwards. Uh, if there was like I don't know a second tier all Australian team for players who should be recognized for their good play, like a level below elite. I think Alex Sexton would be one of those players. The start of the season for Sexton was a lot better than where it is now, but still he's managed to kick far and away the most goals for the Suns. Uh, you have Peter Wright chipping in with 16 goals, which is good, but you know, you still need a lot of development for those kinds of players, especially the tall forward. Braden Fiorini racking up the disposals with an average of 27 disposals per game he is just by and large the best ball getter for the hopefully Fiorini's able to step up his game even further so he's able to give the Suns forward line the best opportunity Darcy McPherson has also been a pretty good surprise packet um again not a big numbers guy but he is in and around the contests he's also playing pretty good on the half forward line just getting the ball in there he's been a integral part to a lot of the closer games that the Suns have played in. Both Jared Witts and Jared Harbrow have been pretty pretty good this season. Harbrow has been in and out of the side with injury and can be a bit inconsistent, but, you know, he's pretty much leading for the front. He's been pr playing pretty well as captain alongside David Swallow. You kind of want to see more and more of Harbrow, especially his speed and elusiveness can really help uh, take the pressure off a lot of the younger uh, defenders and midfielders. The other Jared, Jared Witts, has been a fantastic Ruckman. I honestly think probably one of the most underrated Ruckman at the moment. Sure, you got your Max Gorns and Brody Grundys, but I think Witts has played a large role in keeping a lot of these games very competitive, he wins tap, knocks it down to advantageous situations, and actually is a really strong mark. Now, obviously, if there was an all-Australian team, it's probably going to Grundy or Gorn, but I think, again, if there was a second-tier all-Australian team, uh, he'd definitely be up there. In his second year at the Gold Coast, Lockie Weller has looked to add a whole new level of speed for the team, because he is what, by far one of the fastest players on the ground, especially watching the game against St Kilda as he In the near future, I hope to see the best of Lockie Weller on the Gold Coast and helping them go forward as a team. Um, these This might sound a bit patronising, but I think it's really good that the Suns have stuck in games, um, not just the uh, three games they've lost by under a goal. I think that it's good that they've stuck around in games against the Cats and, uh, and other clubs. Uh, Again, you expect them to get blown out of the water, but they only went down by just under five goals, and that's something you would take, especially because there are a lot of very young players playing against a very, very strong side. Admittedly, they didn't have Patrick Dangerfield, but again, they didn't get blown out, unlike some other performances. In fact, actually, just in general, there have been very few blowouts for the uh, Suns, which is always good to know. Again, like playing against like GWS in Canberra and the Crows at Adelaide Oval is always a tough ask. So, well, isn't really related to the play on the field. And that is that is how they've dealt with a lot of disgruntled players. I think 
the way they've gone about it, they traded a lot of uh, pieces like Stephen May, Cade, Colin Jasney, Aaron Hall, and those guys. They may not have wanted to be there, but you know what? If they don't, get what you can for them. Get draft picks. Get young players. Get up depth, depth pieces. In the long run, will help. Now consisting of a fair few players that just want to be there and play for Stuart Jew, which is kind of what you want as a club, don't you? Also, another really promising sign is you're seeing Peter Wright, Ben Ainsworth, and Jack Bowes re-sign for a longer term, which is always great. But that being said, and a lot of the negatives will reflect this, they still have a long way to go. Again, in the game against St Kilda on Saturday, they burnt the ball so badly. They were just really inefficient, not getting any reward for effort. I think they kicked, what, three goals, five at uh, quarter time. In some games, they have a lot of inside 50s, but just don't do anything with it. And that just kind of stems from an inexperienced side. And especially a lot of young players playing. But yeah, the scoring is a huge issue for the Gold Coast Suns. They are ranked last in goals scored, with only 114 goals kicked this season. In fact, Peter Wright and Alex Sexton have uh, contributed 40 out of those 114 goals. So that's just over a quarter of the goals kicked, kicked by two players. Just another couple of things is um, they're doing the Carlton thing of picking up depth players from other teams and surrounding them with their young core, which doesn't really help them out. I mean, like Sam Collins seems to be the only semi-decent pickup. And even then he was out of AFL football for a couple of years before he got picked up by the Suns. Also one big issue, and you will have this with a lot of very, very young teams, is they do decide to take quarters and sometimes even halves off. Um, one example recently was their game against North where North kicked like seven goals in the first quarter to one goal three. Another theme for most of Gold Coast's existence has been the catastrophic level of injuries and apparently uh, the injury bug has bitten them again this year. You have players like Took Miller missing a fair few games. Sam Collins who's like I said been probably the best of the um, depth pickups um, ben Ainsworth, who, if he were healthy and up and running and playing, I think is probably one of the most underrated small forwards in the game. You got Jack Bowes and Isaac Rankin also not playing. So, for the run home, the Gold Coast will play Sydney, Richmond, Adelaide, Carlton, Essendon, Magpies, Lions, Hawks, and Giants. Yeah, overall, it's very hard to grade the Suns. They've played some excellent periods of football, but also just been, again, all the trappings of a team that is deep in the rebuild. It should be interesting to see how they go, but it could easily be another first overall draft pick for the Suns. Anyway, we'll move on to Adelaide, who have been interesting to watch. They're currently sitting on an 8-5 and five record, sitting 4th place. I don't think that's going to change as of recording. Adelaide have been pretty, again, interesting to watch. And by interesting, I mean painful. You have Eddie Betts, who is our leading goal scorer with 27 goals this season, which I found quite surprising because as much as I love Eddie, I do acknowledge he's getting older and sometimes doesn't have as much impact as he could until he kicks a freakish goal. Our leading disposal getter would be Brad Crouch with 31.8 disposals per game. He's getting a lot of the ball and he's playing fantastically after being completely out for the season last year. So we'll start out with a positive for the Crows. And I think one of the biggest ones is their defense. Now, you might be saying there are a lot of teams that say their defense has been particularly strong this season. But I think Adelaide has been pretty stingy itself. Like, maybe not to the level of Geelong or Frio, but they have uh, put on some pretty heavy lockdown performances against other teams. Uh, Brad Crouch, Cam ellis Yolman, Matt Crouch, Rory Sloan, all those guys have just been workhorses for the Crows midfield. Cam ellis Yolman, 
Again, I think a quite an underrated player. Just a big, bruising, physical kind of player. Uh, just a big body to clear everyone out of the way. And also pretty good user of the ball. You also have um, the Crouch Brothers who just rack up heaps of possession and just help Adelaide move the ball forward. You got Rory Sloan, who is now the co-captain of the club. He has also just been a valiant player. He plays like that all the time. He is just one of the heart, he's the heart and soul of the team. You have players like Lockie Murphy, who I think is one of the more underrated small forwards. Maybe not like, again, stats-wise, but he provides a level of class and forward 50 pressure that helps us lock the ball into the forward line, which is always good to hear and probably w and was the cornerstone of our game in 2017. Jordan Gallucci is looking to play more of a delivery-style role into the forward 50, just like Tom Lynch. He has had his moments of just absolutely beautiful lace-out passes, but... Again, something I'll get to later, sometimes the delivery is a bit poor. Riley O'Brien has been a revelation at Ruck. Again, not on the level of eliteness like Max Gorn and Brody Grundy, but he has been really, really good. Like, he's, I think, played better than Source has in the past couple years. His last two performances against uh, Shane Mumford and the Tigers, two Ruckman, have probably been the best performances of the year so far, O'Brien. And now we'll move on to the negatives. And even though we're 8 and 5, there are plenty of them. Number one, the Crows are very, very, very slow. Uh, I can't count on the number of times that we've gotten a free kick. Looked like we could have had an easy, fast break. And we have just stood still and let um, the uh, opposition's players just mark up. And then we have to just kick it down the line and hope for the best. Especially in the last two games where against the Giants and Tigers. Where it felt like we had a really good... Uh, Crows had a really, really good patch of five minutes. And that got them over the line. Or in the case of Richmond, blew the margin out a bit. Another big negative for the Crows is the lack of for what I call foot-on-the-throat football, or just killer instinct in general. You've seen it, like, we've all seen it, like, the Crows losing to West Coast after being 33 points up clearly take the foot off the pedal, and when the team starts getting momentum, they have to scramble to get it back. With the Eagles, it didn't happen. I think the Crows' defense that game was really good, until we couldn't hit a target in the Ford 50 for the last quarter. Entries into the Ford 50 have been borderline catastrophic. The Adelaide Crows have been slow, inconsistent, and one thing that really ticks me off is they don't mark up players. You'll see it in games where there are four players in the middle all by themselves. You ask where their man is, there's no one near them. A lot of people have been criticizing Tanks for not being able to lead up and take marks, but I'm like, coming back to the... Uh, delivering the Ford 50, you can't really do much when the ball drops 10 meters in front of you, or if you're Rory Atkins, kick it right into the opposition player. If I were to give the Crows a grade, I would be giving them a BF grade. Now, you might be thinking, that grade doesn't exist, but I made it up, and it stands for brutally frustrating, and if that's like the easiest summation of all the issues at the Crows this, this past season. And now, for the run home. First up, we play Geelong in Geelong, which should be a intense match. Then we have a show. Then we have the showdown against the Power. Play up at Metricon against the Suns. Then a home game against the Bombers. Our only MCG game against the Blues. Then a then a game against the Saints at home. Then the Eagles at Optus. Then the Pies at home. And then finally the Bulldogs in Ballarat. So if you liked my incoherent rambling about the Crows, click like. Comment below. I like to read what people think about my opinions. If you like just con the content we're producing in general, please subscribe and ring the bell to stay notified of all new content. If you want to chat with the guys who work on this channel and our budding community, uh, please join our Discord. You get to see me overreact at Crows games unless I'm actually at the game. Anyway, wrapping things up, this has been your AFL Access.